So finally jumping into a project I've been procrastinating for quite some time. And that's mainly due to an ISP issue that it's been a long road for them to get things installed and upgraded and lines ran and then they kind of forgot about us and it was hell to get the database fixed but hopefully that's going to change next week but I'll believe it when I see it but hopefully it should be good. So I'm jumping into the world of OpenSense. I know some people may run PFSense perfectly fine. They're very similar. I have ran both of them before. There are some little politics things behind the PFSense, OpenSense deal. i um, not going to get into a whole lot of that. I have ran both of them. I just prefer the OpenSense kind of community and the GUI and things and kind of the direction they were going. So that's what I'm going to be putting on OpenSense on these. And well, what are these? Well, one of them is really just kind of a play around with a little test bench and it's for backup purposes. But these are great little routers. Now, of course, I'm going to leave all the links down below for you to pick up your own and everything. These are fairly inexpensive. They are fanless. They are have an Intel N5105 in them. And that's a Celeron. I don't think, hey, that's a pretty crappy processor, but it's stupid crazy on power efficiency. You'll notice there's no fan on this guy at all. Now you can, if you kind of like me and you're thinking in the back of your mind, hey, I want to put a fan on it. They can get different fans. AC Infinity makes a cool little fan. It's a USB fan with rubber pads on it. They even make a little squirrel fan side shooter. If you want, you can just drop it on top and it'll definitely keep it cooler, but it's not really required unless probably you had this in a very hot environment. Now they do have on the front or the back, whatever it may be, there's four actual ethernet ports. Now it's not a switch. These are actually four Intel NICs on here. So NIC network interface card is kind of like four network cards. Now the software, you can join them together and everything, but it's more for doing actual different LAN networks. Kind of like if you wanted to do a physical isolation and you didn't really want to do the whole VLAN thing, and this will allow you to do a physical network isolation and say isolate your cameras off to a whole different PoE switch, which really you should be doing is blocking your cameras from the internet because they should be all local, right? Um, they do have some USB ports on the front. I won't be doing the little wireless on here just because I do prefer just my router to route my Wi-Fi be access points and then the switches to do the switching. It's not going to be an all-in-one deal, but I guess if you wanted to add Wi-Fi this thing, you could. You're probably kind of crazy for that. Now, I did buy the one with no RAM and no storage. And why, why that? Well, I didn't want to think about, well, hey, why is it crashing? Well, because they put some sort of craptastic RAM in here. So I wanted to put a decent set of RAM in here. This is DDR4. Now, 0.16 gig, it wasn't that expensive, but yeah, it's probably kind of overkill for a router. And same thing is with the NVMe storage. That's the boot drive as well. I put a heat spreader on it. And I went ahead and went with Western Digital on that because I wanted a little reliability there as well. But with that, you find that they don't want to deal with the smaller NVMe drives anymore. So I think I've, this is 250 gig, which is way overkill. So it's definitely overkill in there, but it's not a bad thing. But the cool thing is these are all four NICs are going to be Intel 226. Now they do have, say on the little older model that I have, it's Intel i225 NICs. They are that B3 stepping. So that's after when they had that problem. So with that said, if you get one, if you do run this on something else, hey, perfectly fine. You're running on a small computer or whatever. Do make sure you're using Intel NICs. I highly suggest it for doing the routing because it, it just works. Now, it's going to run it on a virtual deal. That's all you. Not I'm not doing that. I prefer my router again just to route. I don't want to have to, if I reboot my server or whatever, and then my whole router goes down with it. So I'm just having a bare metal router do the thing. So currently I am going to be pulling out 
My Edge Router 4, it is a Ubiquity, not Unify, but it is by Ubiquity. It's been a great router, but I only have gigabit Ethernet ports on that. Now, this has 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports. All four ports are 2.5 gigabit Ethernet on the front or back or I don't know, just on the unit itself. I keep, I don't know, is there really a front and back? I guess so. This will probably be more the front. So with that, that should cover a lot of different speeds for things because that 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, um, there's no SFP on this particular model, but I know they have some others. I saw some two port models where you know you could feed it to SFP. So you, if you want to do that 10 gig Ethernet, you could do that as well. But probably if you're routing that much, you're probably going to need to go up in processor anyway. Now you will need some sort of little USB stick. I like these little Samsung bars, but you can usually use whatever. It will not stay in the router once you do load it on there because you're just going to boot from here and it's going to load onto the storage drive itself. Not like Unray where you got to leave the USB stick in it, so don't worry about that. Now, I am using a just a little USB keyboard, has a mouse on it. Don't really need the mouse at all for this when I do the setup. And then I'm just using a little temporary screen. You can use whatever you want for that, just an old keyboard or whatever. You're only gonna need it for that potential time when you're just loading it or if you do have some sort of major issue with it because you're gonna run this headless. All you're gonna need is gonna plug in the power and then you're gonna plug in whether the ethernet port or ports for your particular setup and that's pretty much about it. You don't need to plug up any displays or keyboards or whatever and it's just gonna run itself. And then we will make sure in the BIOS that we will turn on the feature that when there's a power loss, it turns itself right back on. And also I highly recommend battery backup for this because yeah, it's just gonna work better if you keep you know everything running in tip top shape with clean power. Now definitely go download your own software from the official website. Now we're doing OpenSense. Go to opensense.org and that's without the E so it's O-P-N as you see here. Go down and it should have most of the defaults picked for you. You know AMD 64, the VGA meaning we're going to be able to view it on the screen. They do have some other options but we're not using those. And you can leave the mirror, you can change it, it's up to you, hit download. And then you can even come in here and check the MD5, I believe, right here, or the, yeah, the hash. You can check that if you really want to be sure that you got the correct version. Now, to load the actual image onto that bootable USB, you can use a couple different command line methods. But if you want to do GUI things, there are, like, say, Rufus. It's just Rufus.ie. I think there's also Unet booting. And yeah, and Unet booting, that's also for Windows, Linux, and Mac, should pretty much cover everybody. And it's pretty much going to do the same thing for loading that image onto that bootable USB. So I'm using that little Samsung, little 32 gig. It's way overkill. But again, it's just going to be used temporarily. So whatever USB flash memory stick you have, just, you know, use it. So I'm using Rufus on mine and if you just go through and you pick, Unit Boon is pretty much going to be the same thing. You're just really just picking the drive, which is mine's. It has multiple partitions. I've used it before. It's this 32 gig. Make sure you do pick the right one. Don't put this on your other hard drives. That would be bad. So we'll just pick select and we'll select that OpenSense VGA, AMD, et cetera, yada, 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 for to be loaded on that USB. Leave all the defaults and just hit start. That's going to tell you, hey, the, the device is about to be destroyed or whatever. So it's like your last chance to make sure it's the right one. I know it is. I'm just going to go ahead and hit OK. And it should say deleting partitions. And it's going to go on through. And then once it's done, you can pull that USB stick and we'll put it on that router. And while you're waiting, go ahead. If you want to come and need some help with different things or home automation or loading this and using things or whatever there's a great group of guys on my discord and probably a few gals in there lurking as well you can check out that link down below and come join us and have some fun and chit chat and you know whether you talk shop or goof off or whatever it may be it's a pretty awesome discord server yeah i'm a little biased now once you make that bootable usb power the thing up and when it's powering up just like going in the bios because it is a computer we're going to just go ahead and spam that delete key 
and it should jump into the BIOS like this. And there's not a whole lot really you need to change, at least I didn't have in the defaults for mine. I can see I got my memory in there, I got my 16 gig, etc. It's running at the two gigahertz. I'm leaving everything defaults, not overclocking anything. I really don't need to do that. And of course, if your computer is different, router is different, it may look a little different, but you need to go dig for those options. There's an option. If I look, I have to go dig for it myself. Now mine, if you look under chipset, PCHIO configuration, look at state after G3. And that's going to be set to power on. And the reason why I do that, if we have a power failure or whatever, it's going to turn itself back on when power comes back. And that way you'll have your internet again without you having to go jack around with it. So we'll go over to the last section. Make sure we do do your save changes and exit. And then come back in. And I like to go in here and just hit boot override. Just, you know, kind of unless you can get that boot menu, but this is kind of that same deal. And that way, you know, you're going to boot off of that USB drive. So we'll go ahead and pick that one. OpenSense is going to start doing its thing. Just let it sit. Takes a little bit. It's just booting from that USB. Now, once it boots up, you're going to be in that live mode, which is, you know, you're booting from that USB. And yeah, if you do have some sort of failure or whatnot or totally mess things up, yeah, make sure and do your backups regularly of all your settings and store them somewhere else. Because then, you know, you just put a USB on it, put your stuff back on it, and call it a day. So we're going to do the installer. And then you're going to type in OpenSense, all lowercase. And this little menu is going to come up. I just leave mine the default key map. I mean, we're not going to be using a keyboard that often, right? We're gonna, I'm going to use UFS, ZFS. I'm not going to be doing any like multiple drives or whatever. I mean, again, this is just my router. Now you'll notice a couple other things in here. You can do import config. You can do a password reset, force reboot, etc. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and do the install UFS. It's going to ask you which drive. I only have one drive. Well, I have that USB. That's that Western Digital Blue. Yours may be a little different name. If you use a different model, perfectly fine. And I just left the recommended swap. And last chance, yep, I want to overwrite this drive. And it is pretty damn quick. So we're just going to fast forward to when it's done. Once it's done, it's going to come up. It's going to say your final configuration. Go ahead and set your root password. I'll go ahead and pick that now. And, uh, and after that, I just sort of space out for about an hour. And we're going to hit complete install once it's set the password. And then once it starts to reboot, let's go ahead and pull that USB stick. Once it closes out and everything, I give it a little bit, it'll, you'll see. And then you can pull that USB stick. Let it do a safe shutdown. All right, we're restarting and we pulled the USB. I do have one cable connected from a hotspot on my ETH0. Um, at this point, if you really want to test things, you don't want to be your exact router. And I know you, everybody doesn't have two ISPs around. You can plug it into your, yeah, the beep is annoying. You can plug it into your like existing network and just kind of use it as a test. Yeah, that way you can put stuff behind it. I know it's double NAT, but it will allow you to get familiar with things. And then this is going to be where it might get different for some people. But I'll go ahead and I'm going to do like the assign interfaces. So I'm not doing lags right now. Not doing VLANs right now. Well, you can do all this later. Don't worry. Um, the WAN interface name. So these are the four ports on here. You can see that they're I226-B. That's pretty good. Um, and then we're just going to do for the WAN, which is going to be your wide area network, your ISP. It's, that's gonna, usually going to be ETH0. They call it IGC0. That's going to be IGC0. And the LAN interface name is going to be full firewall natting mode. That's going to be IGC1, ETH1. So we got just two ports enabled. We're not going to mess with the other two ports right now. And yep, you can see I have that 192.168.5.47 that's coming from that little hotspot. And then it's 
automatically assigned a 192.168.1.1 my LAN. Now, if you want to leave yours this default at 192.168.1.1, you really could attach something to ETH1, like say just take a laptop or the computer, plug it in, it's going to jump as a DHCP IP address, should get internet if everything is connected correctly and be routing in on its way. But I'm gonna go ahead and change mine to a little different number and just, you know, I don't want it to conflict with anything else, you know, for this little test network. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit two and configure IP address via DHCP. I'm gonna say no.168.9.1. For LAN, we'll just hit enter for none. And we're not gonna do IPv6 right now. We can always change that later. We'll say no for none. Do you want DHCP? Yes. Now I'm gonna start my range of just those random addresses. So we're gonna do 192.168.9. Dot, let's just say 100. Then we'll do 192.168.9.250, just do 250. And of course, you can do this all what you want for your own network. It's really going to be down to your preference of things. If you want to do, you know, 10 dot addresses or 172, et cetera, I know a lot of companies use 10 dots and some that may not work out too well with VPNs. So you definitely don't want to step on those. You may want to check if you're doing a lot of VPNs, you have different IP addresses for your network. And then you should be able to just, we're gonna go browse over to 192.168.9.1. All right, we've got another network adapter connected and we're hooked up and let's go see if we can log in. Initial configuration. Now, I'm not gonna run through everything. That's just way too many videos to go through everything. I'm gonna go through some of these and just depending on what I do wanna change. And I, of course, you'll be tweaking some things later as needed based on your own settings. It's just kind of a get you up and running type thing. And we'll hit next. I'll go ahead and leave the time server set as the pool NTP, that's fine. Time zone. And we'll leave the DHCP set, no static IPs. I think I was trying to set up the WAN. Yeah, we'll leave the WAN as all DHCP. We don't have any statics on there. And I've already set this earlier. You can see the 9.1. And we already did the, the root password. And we'll hit reload. It really didn't change anything per se, except a couple little domain settings. Now the dashboard should see we're got things up and pretty cool that you know we have like zero percent cpu usage but of course there's nothing really being routed right now um do want to go through and grab the latest updates i know you just downloaded it but hey it's always good to update things for the most part um i must stay on the stable you know don't need to be on that bleeding edge so we'll go ahead and hit view pending updates. We'll hit check for updates. And it's pretty much gonna walk you through and you just gotta say like, yeah, I wanna do it next, next, etc." And it's just showing all the little updates that are in here. And we'll just go ahead and we'll let it do update. It is gonna do a reboot. Not all updates require a reboot, but just kind of playing around that if you know, if you have some updates. Yep, so we'll hit update. So that'll do it for this one. We're gonna jump into OpenSense more and some deep dives and future videos, but hopefully this is able to get your router going, get your feet wet, and then you should be able to learn more, maybe even come and teach me some things and have some more questions as well. So again, you'll find all the links down below for all the products and the things where you can go buy and do your own thing and definitely Make sure you do a download of your own software. Don't let someone else load your router. You never know what software they put on there. So I appreciate all the Patreon members, YouTube members. For definitely couldn't do it without you and bring projects like this to the channel. And yep, y'all know all the drill. Subscribe, bell icon, whatever the thing down below. Press all them buttons and y'all take care. <laughs> That's a big hole in ours. It just is. See?